Hey chaps, here's your minor scale video. Hi, my name's Patrick and this is a video about the minor scale. So in the last video we talked about the major scale and we started with C major. So we'll do that now. Now the relative minor of C major is A minor. So what do we mean by relative minor? What it means is that A minor and C major have all of the same notes. So if I play the C major scale, and stop on the sixth note, which is A, then I carry on the scale from this note, I have an A minor scale. So we can use this to work out the relative minor of any major key. For example, let's start with F major. So if we play our F major scale, B flat, okay, now let's go up to the sixth note of F major, one, two, three, four, five, six, we get to D. Let's carry on the F major scale from D. So we have a D minor scale. D minor is the relative minor of F major. So we'd write it like this, with one flat, just like in F major. Or we could write it with a key signature instead. Now instead of going up the F major scale to find a sixth note, we could go down the F major scale. So starting on F, we could go down a half step or semitone to the seventh note, and then down a whole step or tone to the sixth note. Gets us to the same note D. And of course we can do this in reverse as well. So let's say somebody's asked you to play a B minor scale and you don't know what sharps or flats to use. You can start on your B. And instead of going down a tone and a semitone, we're going to go up a tone and a semitone. That gets us to D. So we know that D major is the relative major of B minor. Let's play our D major scale. Now we know this has an F sharp and a C sharp. Now let's play the same scale again, starting on B this time. B, so we've got a C sharp, F sharp, and there is your B minor scale. And the key signature of B minor must be F and C sharp. Now there are a couple of variations on the minor scale. The one we've been playing is called the natural minor scale but we can alter this scale to make some new ones. Let's look at what those are and why we use them. Now let's go back to C major for a moment. Now the C major scale ends in a semitone. So the seventh note is a half step or semitone below the last note. This gives a very satisfying conclusion to the scale. It really feels like you've landed home, and it's especially useful in our perfect cadence, which we'll learn about in a later video. Now the perfect cadence has a very final quality, which you'll hear often at the end of a piece of music or just at the end of a phrase. Now, when we go into the relative minor, We finish with a whole step or tone, so the seventh note, the whole step below the final note. Let's hear it in a cadence. This doesn't quite feel as finished. So what's the answer? Well, we simply change the minor scale. We take that last 
that one note. And we raise it by a half step or semitone. So what it does now is semitone below the final note. Now let's hear what that sounds like in our perfect cadence. Now that sounds finished. So this scale is one you may have already practiced. It's called the harmonic minor scale. Let's try the same thing with our D minor scale from earlier. Make the C into a C sharp. And there's your D harmonic minor scale. Now it can look strange to have a sharp and a flat next to each other. But that's how we're going to write it, because in a major or minor scale, we need one of every letter name. So every single major or minor scale has an A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And let's try writing that with the key signature. Now our D natural minor, the scale we started with, has just a B flat in it. So that is the key signature of D minor. But we also have a C sharp that we've just added. Now this is an alteration to the scale, not part of the key. So we're going to write that as an accidental. Now we like that harmonic minor scale because it gives us that final sounding perfect cadence like we have in the major. However, it leaves us with a different issue. We now have a very large gap between the sixth note and the seventh note. And if we want to play a flowing melody, we might want to find a way to smooth over that gap. And that leads us to the melodic minor scale. The melodic minor scale is the same as the harmonic minor, except we raise the sixth note as well as the seventh. So the top of the scale is a lot smoother. Now let's just check how we'd write that one down. So the beginning is the same, but when we get to our B flat, we've raised it by half a step or a semitone which gets us to B natural, then we have our C sharp, then our D. Now let's write that as a key signature. So just like before, we are still in D minor, so our key signature is just a B flat. Now it may seem strange to have a key signature that we're essentially not using, but writing like this is helpful to you when you're learning a new piece of music. When you see that B flat at the beginning, you can work out that the piece of music is probably in F major or D minor. Now as soon as you glance through the music and you start seeing B naturals or C sharps, then you know we are definitely in D minor rather than F major. Now if you know the piece of music is in D minor, then you can practice your D minor scale before playing the piece, which makes learning it a lot easier. We'll discuss that a little bit more in the next video. Now just before we finish, it's useful to know there are two different ways of practicing a melodic minor scale. There is the classical melodic minor and the jazz melodic minor. Both of them are exactly the same on the way up. Now in the jazz melodic minor, you come back down exactly the same way you went up. Now the classical melodic minor comes back down using the natural minor, the one we started with. Now we've talked about major scales and minor scales. In the next video we'll talk about how these apply to real life music and how learning your scales can help you better understand the music you're playing on this music. See you then.